In early 1873, the future HMS Alexandra was laid down. This central battery ironclad would serve as Mediterranean Fleet flagship and an early haunt of Jackie Fisher for many years. But that summer, another ship was laid down on the adjacent slipway at Chatham Dockyard. This ship would be, um, interesting. HMS Temeraire was the fourth of her name the name itself being taken from a captured French ship of the line, and the last iteration of the Temeraire had fought at the Battle of Trafalgar. This version, the new one, was being built as the result of an attempt to square the circle of gun layout that plagued 1870s ship design. Namely, if you wanted a good field of fire and large guns, you needed a turret ship like the Devastation. But the weight of the guns and the turrets was so great that these vessels had to be of low freeboard, which wasn't ideal. It was possible to build a high freeboard ironclad using the central battery layout, like the Alexandra, but whilst this meant better sea keeping and a greater internal volume, it also meant that the guns themselves had restricted arcs of fire and were individually smaller. So, taking a hull design that was modelled initially after the earlier HMS Hercules and HMS Sultan, they ended up cutting 40 foot off of the bow of that first draft in order to make the ship more agile and thus better able to ram, which was in vogue at the time, and then set about the main feature, an odd hybrid weapons layout. This consisted of a small partial central battery with four single 10-inch guns, two per broadside, and a single 11-inch gun per side which fired along the hull facing forward in its own armoured compartment. Hence partial central battery, as it didn't offer any aft firing capability. But that wasn't the extent of the main battery. There were also a pair of open-topped barbettes, one fore and one aft, necessitating the removal of the mizzen mast from the design. That's uh, what's typically the third and aftmost mast in most 18th and 19th century capital ships. Each of these barbettes supported a single 11-inch gun in a hydraulically powered disappearing mount. This was considered to be an advantage over the French barbette system, where the guns were permanently exposed, and thus the crews could be exposed to counterfire. But, due to the need for an ammunition hoist, the gun's turntable was mounted off-center in relation to the barbette, the offset being forward in the fore barbette and aft in the aft barbette. This meant that the guns, which were muzzle-loading, could not be reloaded if you used a conventional disappearing mount, since the muzzle would come down to be almost flush with the barbette wall. And so instead, the guns would flip over 180 degrees as they descended to face the other way, where they could then be reloaded from the back of the barbette. The reloading end of the barbette had a thin iron roof over it, mainly for protection from the elements. The entire system, when well greased, was described as eerily silent, accompanied by only a slight hissing as curious guns would pop up seemingly out of nowhere, flip 180 degrees, and then aim at their target. As built, the ship also had a basic anti-torpedo boat battery of four single 20-pound guns, and a pair of torpedo launchers, one per side just aft of the central battery. The smaller guns would later be replaced by a larger battery of six single 4-inch guns, a dozen 6-pounder guns, and a number of Nordenfelt machine guns. However, the main feature of the ship was not a great success. The actual firing capabilities of the disappearing mount guns were fine, but the whole system was considered massively inefficient. Each barbette needed 33-foot diameter space on the deck, and could only mount a single 11-inch gun, whilst the turrets of that generation's HMS Dreadnought were 6 inches smaller, but carried a pair of 12-inch guns each. Thus, Temeraire would end up being unique in history for the use of at-sea disappearing mounts on an ocean-going warship. Laid down in August 1873, launched in May 1876, and commissioned in August 1877, she displaced just over 8,500 tonnes and was capable of just over 14.5 knots using 7,500 indicated horsepower, which was directed through a pair of screws, with the power plant being an early vertical double expansion engine set. Her armour protection seemed an attempt to use all possible available numbers. 
The belt was 11 inch midships, thinning down to 9 inches and then down to 6 inches as it trended fore and aft, running the full length of the ship. The central battery had 8 inch thick armour and the fore and aft bulkheads of the battery were the same thickness, but with a 5 inch thick divider bulkhead between the broadside and forward aiming central battery guns. The aft barbette had 8 inches of armour, whilst the forward barbette had 10 inches of armour. Known as the Great Brig due to her two masts, despite having the single largest sail ever hung on a Royal Navy vessel, she wasn't actually especially fast under sail, although she would have the honour of being the last Royal Navy ship to work its way into harbour using sails alone. She spent much of her career in the Mediterranean and would be present at the Bombardment of Alexandria in 1882, returning to the UK in 1887, briefly, before returning to the Mediterranean until 1890 when she was rammed by HMS Orion during manoeuvres. After repairs, she was put into the reserves, during which time she was refitted, 1899 seeing her masts being removed and replaced with signal masts and having her funnels replaced by taller versions. In 1904, she was turned into a machinery training ship, renamed Indus II, and then in 1915, she was renamed again to Akbar and was sent to Liverpool, where she would become a depot ship before being sold for scrap in 1921. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.